Namaste, my friends. My name is Mila and my channel is Abka Swagate. In today's video, I would like to speak about the lessons I have learned from Bhagavad Gita and how I implement them in my daily life. So, ciao! So, one thing that I have learned from Bhagavad Gita is in chapter 2, verse number 47, where Krishna says, You have a right to perform your prescribed duty, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities and never be attached to not doing your duty. So you see, this is something that I never knew before. Before I came in touch with Bhagavad Gita, I was always thinking, yeah, whatever uh, I, whatever result I, I get in life is just because of my efforts. I didn't put too much, enough efforts or I put too much efforts or so on and so on. But Bhagavad Gita taught me that actually it's not only our efforts, but there are also other things that are involved. Um, and this is um, our karma, the will of God, the effort, for efforts of others, the collective karma of other people who are also engaged in that activity and of place and circumstances. So before I came in touch with Bhagavad Gita, whatever, uh, for example, something good would happen, I would get a straight A or anything. I would think, oh yeah, this is because of my effort, but it's not like that. And not only in Bhagavad Gita, but also in day-to-day -day life, I see in India, you know, when some great achievement is there, they're always so humble. They're like, Oh, no, 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 this is nothing to do with me. This is all Kripa and, you know, they, they um, always give the credit to others or to God. And this is something very amazing that I am learning to do uh, on a daily basis. Second lesson that I have learned from Bhagavad Gita is in the chapter 2, verse number 14. Matra sparshas tu kaunteya shitushna suka duhugada agama paino nitya stamtitikshas bharata. You see, I have learned it even by heart. Uh, Krishna is saying, O oh, son of Kunti, the non-permanent appearance of happiness and distress and their disappearance in due course are like the appearance and disappearance of winter and summer se se seasons. They arise from the sense perception, O oh, son of Bharata, and one must learn to tolerate them without being disturbed. So there are five senses, the sense of sight, the sense of smell, the sense of uh, taste, the sense of hearing and the sense of touch. And according to them, we experience uh, happiness or distress. An example is given of cool water. Uh, cool water gives pleasure in summer, but it is a source of distress in winter. So if we do not learn how to be titiksha vakarunika, how to be tolerant and equipoised, then we will be like a pendulum just swaying from one side to the other. But we have to learn to be steady and not be influenced by this uh, distress and happiness uh, that come in our life and uh, uh, my meditation my daily meditation is for example if i s face some negative things in my life problems then i always meditate these two shall pass maybe now in winter soon will come spring again so another lesson that i have learned from bhagavad gita is in chapter 16 verse 21 there are three gates leading to this hell, lust, anger and greed. Every sane man should give this up for they lead to the degradation of the soul. So if lust is not satisfied, it turns into anger and then into greed. And if we don't learn how to uh, calm our mind and our emotions, then uh, our mind and senses become uh, also fertile field for even more negativities to come in my, our life. So that's why Krishna is saying in Bhagavad Gita how to control that by constantly thinking of Him. And Srila Prabhupada also um, gave us uh, this daily meditation of the Maha Mantra. I have here, I want to show you my Japa Mala. My Japa Mala is consisted of 108 of these beads and on every bead I chant one Maha Mantra so one round would be 108 Maha Mantras and I chant 16 such rounds that means it is uh, it takes like about almost two hours a daily meditation to uh, that will help us help me and help us of course in um, conquering these three enemies also it is said that in this kali yuga there is no other way no other way no other way 
to achieve liberation, then uh, the chanting of the Maha Mantra, it is repeated three times. Kalam Nastyeva, 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 Gatira Nyata. And another fourth lesson that I have learned from Bhagavad Gita is in chapter 9, verse 27, where Krishna says, Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever you offer or give away, and whatever austerities you perform, do that, O son of Kunti, as an offering to me. So, Srila Prabhupada explains in the purport of this verse that we have to mold our lives in such a way that we are constantly remembering Krishna in every situation. So, Krishna mentions in this verse uh, about whatever you eat, do it as an offering to me. So, I have learned that uh, whatever I cook, I offer to Krishna. And if you have seen some of my cooking videos, you will see that after I finished cooking, I will put in a special plate that is only for Krishna and I put on the altar and with mantras I offer this with, uh, to Krishna, to my deities. But while cooking, I try to put all my whatever little, whatever affection I have, I squeeze it into the cooking and uh, with hope that Krishna will accept the offering because uh, Krishna has everything. He is the Supreme Personality of God and He doesn't need anything. He doesn't need my chapati, my chaval, you know, but He needs my love. He needs our love. This is the only thing he doesn't have. And uh, to back this, what I have just explained, Krishna is saying this in the verse previous to this one, this uh, verse 26, he's saying, if one offers me with love and devotion a leaf, a flower, fruit or water, I will accept it. And the Sanskrit is, patram pushpam palam toyam yome bhakta prayachati tadaham bhaktya Upahritam Vashnami Praya Tatmanaha. And then uh, Srila Prabhupada writes here two, two pages per part. I would recommend you read it if you have some time, but I want to read only the first two sentences because I find them very, very nice. The first sentence is for the intelligent person. He's saying here intelligent person because Krishna consciousness is for everyone, but usually only intelligent person. Um, take up Krishna consciousness. So he's saying, for the intelligent person, it is essential to be in Krishna consciousness, engage in the transcendental loving service of the Lord in order to achieve a permanent blissful abode for eternal happiness. And the next sentence, the process of achieving such a marvelous result is a very easy and can be attempted even by the poorest of poor without any kind of qualification. So even the poorest of the poor can worship Krishna and uh, can uh, please Krishna. You don't have, you don't have to have, a, I don't know, so much money and buy amazing presents for Krishna, no. Our Vaishnava culture is full of such stories that even poor people um, offer something cr to Krishna with love and then Krishna accepts. Like, uh, like for example, uh, Sanatana Goswami, he was offering chapati without salt to his uh, Madan Mohan deity or uh, Raghunadas Goswami who was living at that time at Radha Kund. He was so absorbed uh, in, in uh, meditation of Krishna that uh, no money to buy sweet rice, uh, to buy rice and milk and prepare that. But he would, uh, in meditation, he would make the sweet rice and Krishna would accept this manasa sweet rice. So I hope uh, with today's video I could inspire some of you and I would really recommend, highly recommend that you order this Bhagavad Gita with purpose by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada and read it on a daily basis. It really changes life. Thank you very much and see you in the next video. Rade Rade Hare Krishna!